sends a bolt of fear through the leadership in both Washington and Moscow. You make mistakes in military operations. Mistakes with conventional weapons kill thousands, tens of thousands. They don't destroy nations. Mistakes with nuclear weapons will. MAD, or Mutually Assured Destruction, has been the foundation of nuclear strategy. It means building so many weapons that the other side would never dare attack. To add another layer of safety, Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev and American President John F. Kennedy agreed to install a hotline between the White House and the Kremlin. Now, if a crisis looms, they have a direct line of communication. In this 1963 speech, President Kennedy tries to bridge the nuclear divide with the Russians. Our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's futures. And we are all mortal. In the summer of 1963, representatives of the U.S. and USSR meet in Moscow and sign the Limited Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Arms control. The Test Ban Treaty. An agreement to stop exploding atomic and thermonuclear devices in the atmosphere, under the sea, and in outer space. And beneath this veneer of restraint, the nuclear arms race continues at a fierce pace. In 1962, the U.S. has more than 25,000 nuclear weapons. The USSR, a little over 3,000. By the end of the decade, the American arsenal has scarcely grown, while the Soviets scramble to catch up. The Soviets are determined never to be outgunned again as they were during the Cuban Missile Crisis. It isn't until 1972 that both sides agree to limit the number of nuclear weapons. In Moscow, Richard Nixon and Leonid Brezhnev sign a document known as SALT-1. It freezes land and sea-based strategic missiles at present levels for five years. But any limitations are far from comprehensive, and both sides' arsenals keep growing and evolving through the 1970s and into the 80s. The introduction of new Soviet intermediate-range missiles placed in Europe leads the U.S. and its allies to respond in kind, and protests erupt. The anti-nuclear movement grows and evolves too, as citizens realize that the threat of nuclear Armageddon isn't going away. In the spring of 1982, about a million people demonstrate in New York against nuclear arms. It is the largest political demonstration in American history. But the anti-nuclear movement does little to end the dangerous standoff between the two superpowers. Early in 1983, President Reagan puts the Cold War in moralistic terms as he urges the activists not to ignore the facts of history and the aggressive impulses of an evil empire to simply call the arms race a giant misunderstanding and thereby remove yourself from the struggle between right and wrong and good and evil. Both wrong and good and evil as a moral struggle and both sides stereotype the other in the worst possible light. In the 1980s, fear of nuclear accidents is on everyone's mind, since there already had been near misses in both the U.S. and Soviet Union. The Day After, a made-for-TV movie, is one of the highest-rated programs in history. Soviet citizens fear nuclear war just as much as Americans. Attempting to cool down the terrifying arms race, Soviet General Secretary Mikhail Gorbachev and United States President Ronald Reagan begin negotiations and start to establish a level of trust as a result of their meeting in Geneva. When the two leaders meet in Reykjavik, Iceland in 1986, they come close to agreeing to eliminate all nuclear weapons. But disagreement over an American defense system known as Star Wars leads them to a dead end, and they don't eliminate any weapons. We do not mistrust each other because we're armed. 
We're armed because we mistrust each other. In spite of this, Reykjavik does pave the way for future arms reductions. The next year, the two leaders sign a treaty that eliminates nearly 3,000 intermediate range missiles. That leads to START 1, an agreement signed in July of 1991 by President George H.W. Bush and Gorbachev. Over several years, it will eliminate many thousands of nuclear warheads, including 450 Minuteman II missiles. Yep, I, I hereby discontinue my activities. Less than six months later, Gorbachev resigns as the Soviet Union dissolves. In the decades since signing START 1, tensions have flared between the U.S. and Russia, as well as between Russian and U.S. allies in Europe, even edging toward military confrontation. Still, both sides have shrunk their nuclear arsenals. The U.S. and Russia have moved forward from MAD to START and beyond. Yet there are still thousands of nuclear weapons poised for war, with other countries developing or expanding their nuclear arsenals, and terrorist groups striving for nuclear arms, the goal of keeping the world truly safe from nuclear disaster is still 